guys, this is Samantha, aka Mixed and Transition. I am just here because I wanted to do a kind of a quick video, even though I know it's not going to turn out to be quick, um, video about just some of the oils that I am familiar with and have used in the past. Um, if you are newly natural, newly new to new to transitioning, um, or you have just decided that you wanted to take a more natural, all natural um, approach when it comes to the products you use on your hair. It can be really overwhelming with all of the different oils that are out there. Um, so I thought what I could do for you is take what I have learned and kind of synthesize that into a quick little video about some of the benefits and uses of the oils that I have used. Now, disclaimer here is, and I will make a video about this at some point, but I transitioned for, out of no, I did not have a choice when I transitioned. I was exper experiencing excessive hair loss and shedding and things like that and my hair just could no longer take a relaxer so I inadvertently transitioned um, and kind of learned how to take care of my health my hair using all natural remedies because chemicals in general were what was the root of my hair loss so like I said I'll make a video about that later but I just want to um, put that out there that a lot of these oils that I do use serve to help with hair loss so I'm going to be try, try to be really quick with this so that I'm not too boring. Um, and also, um, my hair looks like this because it is wash day and I'm about to do a pre-poo, but I wanted to do this first. Um, oh, also, and it has been two years since I got my last relaxer. So this is about two years of growth for me. And I'm excited and never thought that I would get to this point. Um, but journey's not over. I still have some goals of growth and health. So... Anyway, aside from that, let's go ahead and get started. So the first one that I want to talk to you about is, of course, olive oil. Olive oil is readily available, so I recommend that all um, transitioning or natural, um, naturalist, natural hair girls have this on hand. Um, you can get this at your grocery store, but the important thing about this is to make sure that it is extra virgin olive oil, and um, with that, it's just less refined, meaning it's less processed, meaning that you get the most benefits out of it. So definitely make sure you're using EVOO, extra virgin olive oil. Um, great thing about this, you can use this as a pre-poo by itself. It's moisturizing. I've done that in the past and I really liked it. Um, let's see. It does add moisture, strength, and shine to your hair. So it could be a really great thing just to, when you don't have a lot of time, throw some olive oil on it. Let it sit for a while and you should be good. So, olive oil. Definitely have olive oil. Next, and this will not be the first time you've heard this, uh, coconut oil is my, um, gives me life huh, in general. Um, coconut oil, and as, as with the extra virgin olive oil, coconut oil, it's especially important to get extra virgin and to also get pure and refined. I think this is backwards, so I apologize for how you're viewing this. But the reason for that is because you want to get products that are that have been less processed. If you're going to take the time to put stuff on your hair, you want to make sure that you're using the most organic um, way that it comes. So using the pure and refined and extra virgin means that has been less processed. Therefore, there are more nutrients in what you're buying. And that is important because it's costly. But if you get a big old tub like this, it might last you a while. Not really. I'm kind of running out of mine. Ooh. Anyway. Um, coconut oil is anti, um, antibacterial and antimicrobial, which means that's going to be really great for your scalp. Um, gets all of the nasty, gunky stuff off of it. Um, it reduces protein loss. So a lot of naturals, we have a hard time balancing between moisture and protein. Um, sometimes we over moisturize and that makes our hair like really soft and squishy, um, and kind of takes away some of the strength that we could have. So this is a great way to balance that. Um, it also prevents hydro fatigue, so it's a great way, it's a great pre-poo in and of and by itself, um, just because it keeps your hair from getting to, um, it, when you have hydro fatigue, your hair just gets weak, and because of all the water, all the water just goes right into your hair strands, and it's just full of water, and you know, kind of bloated, this is my analogy, um, and it just doesn't, your hair just doesn't act like it should, so coconut oil is great for that, um, and it, the way that it's structured on the molecular molecular level is such that it's able to penetrate your hair strands better than most oils. So that's definitely a great thing if you're looking to really 
um, put some health back into your hair. Uh, and it also, just the overall health and strength of your hair too. So coconut oil, great as a pre-poo. Um, it's getting closer to the winter months for me. So I won't necessarily use coconut oil during the week just because when it gets to a certain temperature, it will turn white. Otherwise, it is a liquid um, up until room temperature, I think. So that's just something to be mindful of too. Um, next, let's go with Jamaican black castor oil. So Jamaican black castor oil is great for all hair types. Um, it moisturizes, thickens, and strengthens the hair. It also increases the blood flow, which in turn in stimulates hair growth. How I use this, I use this in my pre-poo recipes, but I also use it like during the week. I will put some on my temples and um, on my edges and just moisturize that in so that um, I can make sure that I'm not losing the edges if I pull it back too much. And it also thickens my edges. And I feel like I have seen a difference in an increase in since I've done that. And I typically do that every other day. Um, so Jamaican black castor oil is also a great thing. So, but a note about this one, it is kind of thick. So a lot of people don't like to use it um, all over their hair, which is why I just use it on my edges. So something to think about. Um, next is rosemary oil. Rosemary oil is another oil that I started using when I was um, experiencing excessive hair shed. So this one is really great because it does stimulate hair growth. And um, so with that, it does keep your hair from shedding excessively. Um, but note about this, it is quite pungent. Um, and I always tend to use too much of this. And so all I can smell is like rosemary oil. So just be mindful of that and be careful that you're not overdoing it with rosemary oil. Um, with rosemary oil, you are going to want to use this with a carrier oil, so either coconut or olive oil. You don't want to put this directly on your scalp by itself. Um, next is emu oil. Um, this is something new that I've added to my regimen. Um, disclaimer about this, it is made from emu birds, so if you live a vegan lifestyle, this is not for you. Um, so, just be careful about that if you want to have a vegan um, hair regimen too. So. Um, with emu oil, it is an anti-inflammatory, so that's really going to be really good for your scalp. Um, there's talk of it helping to reduce hair loss, but none of the studies have really proven that that is um, really the case. It's more correlational with other things that you're doing with your hair. So hopefully someday we'll find out more if this really does um, contribute to reduced hair shed. Um, but what it does do is helps, it penetrates the skin really well. So if you add this into some of your pre-poo mixes and that you are focusing on hair scalp health, um, it can definitely help all of the oils penetrate better. So that's why I use it in, um, in my pre-poos. Next is rose hip seed oil. This I originally started using because I was experiencing a lot of acne marks after, um, I just started getting acne all of a sudden again. I, I'm in grad school, so um, stress was probably really related to that. With that, I started getting dark spots. So rosehip seed oil is really good at managing um, scars. So I would put a little bit of this in my all-natural toner, which I can also do a video about as well. Um, but rosehip rose, rose hip seed oil ugh, um, does help moisturize the hair and the scalp so it can reduce dandruff, um, renews hair follicles, so that in turn can promote hair growth and reduce shedding. Um, so yeah, it's also something that you don't want to use just by itself. I would include it with a carrier oil, again, coconut olive oil. Next is another one that is pretty new and that is cider wood. Um, cider wood oil, um, helps hair growth by stimulating the scalp. So again, this is another one that I use in hopes of combating any additional excessive hair loss. Um, again, something that I would not to be used directly on the scalp, I would put this in with a carrier oil, not by itself. Um, next is vitamin E. Um, this is going to be great for, um, good to have for your skin, helps with scarring and things like that. But as far as your hair go, grow, as far as your hair goes, it also moisturizes, increases shine, promotes hair growth, and nourishes hair follicles. So definitely something um, to consider if you're looking to get that up your up the ante on any pre-poo that you might have. Um, next is thyme, thyme, whatever. I never say it right, and I'm not going to try, but it's the T-H-Y-M-E. 
oil. Um, so this helps clear residue from the scalp, um, helps with dandruff, and stimulates the hair, um, stimulates the scalp to promote growth. So this is also something that um, I have recently started using, and I do just add this into my pre-poo. Um, note about this, I believe this one is the red kind, but there are two types of this oil, so white and red. Red can um, irritate the scalp, irritate your skin, so just be really careful. Um, if you do decide to use this and you see some changes, it may in fact be this. Um, therefore, a lot of people do use the white thyme, thyme, whatever, oil, so just be aware of that. Next is argan oil. Um, argan oil is great. I use this too in my pre poos as well. Um, helps to make the hair softer, shinier, and also helps to tame frizz. So something else to consider to add it in um, to your pre poo Next is nettle oil. I had never heard of this until I watched a video by Natural85. She included this in one of her overnight oils, so I have started to use this. And this is great because it does generate hair growth, reduces shedding, and contains sulfur, which is a naturally occurring substance in our body. Um, some of you may be familiar with internal things that you can take, like MSM, um, to help promote hair growth and to keep your hair from falling out. It extends the life of your hair um, phases, so your hair can grow longer than it would before. It would just naturally fall out. Um, so nettle is made of sulfur, too. So Perhaps it could be something that you could use to supplement your MSM internally and using this on your on the outside of your hair. Because if you use MSM externally, like the powder, you do risk having excessive hair loss until you because you have to acclimate your scalp and your hair to that. So that's kind of a scary process. I haven't dabbled in that, but anyway, nettle. Um, next is grapeseed oil, and I apologize, there's hair all over it. I didn't wipe this one down. Grapeseed oil is really great. Um, because it does prevent moisture loss. So I do add this into some of my pre-poo mixes just to make sure that the oil that I, or the all the stuff I'm putting into it to moisturize it maintains. Um, so I think this is a good one, good option to, to use for um, the O in your lock method or LCO or LOC lock method um, just to help keep that um, moisture in what you're already doing. So, and it's light, so it's not really like, a really heavy oil to use like some can be um and next is my favorite uh, aside from coconut oil avocado oil avocado oil has really been something that I've used more now that I am all natural um, I use this for my O method or for my LCO method um, it has really helped keep my hair moisturized and um, keeps my curls uh, soft so I really do like using this one because my hair is really fine and thin. Um, I can't quite, my hair can't handle using olive oil or coconut oil for my, um, for my lock method. So avocado oil is really great. Um, it does enhance the moisturization from other products. Again, going to be beneficial for um, helping with all the other stuff that you're putting in your hair. You can use this as a carrier oil, so just like coconut oil and olive oil, you can use it that way. Um, it does moisturize the scalp. Again, healthy scalp, healthy hair. And um, some I know there are some people that use deep conditioners that they really like, but it just doesn't give it, it's maybe too thick, and it, so it just doesn't give you enough slip to like detangle your hair while you're deep conditioning. Avocado oil can be added to your deep conditioner to help with that slip. So that's really great, and it's light, so I really like it, and I use it throughout the week too um, when I am refreshing my curls. Next is sweet almond oil. Sweet almond oil is really high in vitamin E, um, so you can use this, um, or you can use vitamin E, but I think this is cool because it has vitamin E in it. Um, it helps with the luster, luster and moisturization of your hair, so it can make your hair really shiny. Um, which is always good. Shiny hair indicates healthy hair. Um, and it can also be used on your ends to help prevent um, split ends, which is always great because I think a lot of people have trouble with keeping um, the ends of their hair moisturized. So this could be a really great thing because um, it, it is really relatively light. Um, so if you're afraid of using too many oils during the week because you don't want to have a greasy look, this could definitely be um, something that you can look into um, as far as using. So that's a good thing. And looks like the sun is setting, so I apologize for the 
lines on my hair, on my face. Anyway, the last thing that I want to mention, because this video is getting pretty long, is jojoba oil. I don't have that on hand right now. I actually ran out or I gave it to my mom. I don't know. I'm always giving my oils away because I have so many of them. But jojoba oil is really great too because it does moisturize. Um, it can help cleanse the scalp and it nourisher, nourishes hair follicles to reduce shedding. So um, jojoba oil is something that you can use throughout the week by itself or you can add it to a pre-poo recipe. Um, anyway, that is all that I have for you guys. I hope that this was educational some way and that you um, are more informed in deciding which oils you want to use in your next pre-poo. Um, a lot of these oils are available at, natural at a natural grocery store, um, but it is kind of sometimes worth your time to look online to see if you can order them. For instance, that emu oil is about $19 at my natural grocers. But online for, on Amazon, I got it for about $9, I think. So um, definitely worthwhile looking into that. Anyway, I, like I said, I hope this helps for somebody. Um, if you have any particular questions about any of these oils, feel free to leave, um, leave, a, leave it in the comments below. Um, message me on Instagram at Mixed in Transition. Uh, I have a Twitter account, but I don't really get on there very often. Um, so that's there too. But anyway, like I said, I really hope that this is helpful and um, you guys come back. So like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks again for watching.